Okay, good morning, afternoon or night, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Matthew Bodie, and today I will be discussing identifying the non-European ancestors within your genetic ancestry and kind of proving that with a paper trail. So I suppose that um, this can kind of be seen as a follow-up to my initial ancestry DNA results video, and I just wanted to address a few things, a few comments I got from a few people there. I did get a little bit of backlash, but mostly the um, feedback was overwhelmingly positive, so I do appreciate all your comments. So first off, people, um, I guess, got a bit angry about using the term colored, which, as I did explain in the video, in South Africa, which is where I'm from, is not an offensive word at all. It's a official demographic of South Africa. It's um, kind of synonymous with the word mixed race there and isn't seen as offensive at all. Also, a lot of people said I was trying to claim to be black, which is probably as far from the truth as possible. That would be cultural appropriation in every sense of the term, and I wasn't trying to do that at all. But just because I'm not culturally black does not negate the fact that I have non-European ancestry because that is a fact and it is a fact that I'm going to prove today in this video. So, initially I went to America on holiday in 2015 and while I was there I did an ancestry DNA test and here are my results. Okay. All right, so here you go. So as you can see, overwhelmingly European, which I knew from my research. I have a lot of German ancestry. I have some Irish, some British, which probably fell into the Europe West category, depending on the area of England where they were from. But as you can see at the top here, I also had 2% African, and specifically West African. So I thought to myself, all right, this bears further investigation. So I decided, first off, to try and prove it on paper. And literally, I think it was a week after I got my DNA results, I found my second great-grandparents' marriage record. And I'll just get that up on Ancestry here. And as you can see, on this marriage record, which will load in a second, they were both classified as colored, which was quite handy. That, that therefore allowed me to narrow down which area of my tree to investigate further. So I thought that was good news, right? But first off, just to prove that it is indeed from my mother's side, I'm going to get my mother tested. And lo and behold, when I did get her tested, my mom had 5% African DNA. So again, this proves that my African lineage stems from my mother's side. My mother is quite pale, just like me. I think I actually got my pale skin from her. Ironically, my father is 99% European and 1% Central Asian, according to Ancestry DNA, and he's more tan than the both of us. But my mom's sister is, has got um, quite a nice tan. She's, um, what do you call it, olive, I suppose. So... Ironically, well, I suppose not ironically, she was 7% African, and of that 7%, Mali, which is also in West Africa, was 5%, and that was a main region. I'll reiterate, that was a main region. It was not a low-confidence region, which, again, is concrete proof of this African lineage. So, that was great. I had... Um, a line to narrow down as to where this non-European ancestry came from. I had a couple of where, uh, sorry, I had a couple to my family tree of like people who I knew where it came from. So first off, seeing as both of them were classified as colored, I decided to research their siblings to see if they had similar classifications. And luckily for me, in this family, there was a double marriage. So Samuel here, he had a sister, Jane Eliza, who married 
Francis Daniel Mazenkamp, who was Elizabeth Susan's full brother. So if I find their marriage record, if I bring it up here, we will see that they too were classified as mixed. Very interesting. And just to give you a visual, I can show you a photograph of Samuel and his wife, Elizabeth. Right, so here's Samuel Wells Coots, my second great grandfather. And I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing, I may be a bit biased, but I definitely do see some African features. Definitely. And here's his wife, Elizabeth Susan. Her father was actually born in Germany, and I know for a fact that her mother was classified as mixed race. So I'll show you my proof of this. Elizabeth Susan, if I go to her profile, she was the daughter of a German man, as I said, and an Afrikaans woman from the town of Villiersdorf in the Western Cape of South Africa. And they never got married because France, or his alias, Francis, was married to someone and he didn't obtain an official divorce decree from her. This is a lady also of German descent. And he seems to have abandoned her in around 1890 and moved to Kimberley, which is a town where a lot of my family are from, and um, hooked up with Christina Bester, and they had, I think, nine children together. Or, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sorry, eleven children together, only five of which lived to adulthood. And in 1895, she registers her son Alexander's birth, and... And here is Christina registering her son Alexander's birth. And as you can see, there's no father listed because this child is illegitimate by those standards in those days because Christina and Francis weren't married. And as you can see here, race or nationality mixed. So once I expanded her lineage out, I found that she had some people within her lineage with the surname van der Karp. And van der Karp in South Africa, a direct translation means from the Cape, which basically means you were a child of or descendant of the enslaved or prostitutes, I believe was the other option. But oftentimes these prostitutes were the racially ambiguous. And interestingly, Alexander died as a child, and I believe his father, his father registered his death. So, in South Africa, oftentimes the, class, the racial classification depended on the informant. So no, Francis didn't register this death, but if I go to another child, they had quite a few that died young. Try Johanna here. You'll notice that Francis signs for the form and that the child is classified as European. So that proved the mixed race lineage on my second great grandmother's side, but I find my second great grandfather's a bit more interesting because I believe that his grandmother was quite possibly the first generation daughter of the, an enslaved couple. And I haven't been able to prove who my parents are yet, but if I go ahead and expand my grandfather's family tree, you'll notice a little brick wall here. And there's someone called Elsie Regina von Sale, born in Bloemfontein around 1832. And she marries an English man. He's straight from England, Northamptonshire. So, Samuel's grandfather here, born in Scotland, his grandmother, born in England, 
His other grandfather, born in Scotland, sorry, born in England. And here's Elsie, born in South Africa. Okay, so as we can see, we are on my fourth great grandmother, Elsie Regina's profile on my family tree. And I did manage to locate an adult baptism for her in a Methodist church in Bloemfontein, which is where her first few children were born. So let's go and analyze that baptismal entry. So here she is being listed by her married name. A few little interesting things to point out on this record. She has no parents listed. She's baptized by her married name as an adult, which are all very much indicators of non-European ancestry. Most Europeans will firstly list their exact date of birth, if they knew it, or an age. For Elsie, they just put adult. They may, she may not have even known her age. Another sure indicator for me was that she was baptized in the native Wesleyan Chapel of Bloemfontein. And for those of you who are not familiar with South African history, this church is actually the church where the African National Congress <clears throat> was founded. For those of you who don't know what the African National Congress is, that is the political party which Nelson Mandela was affiliated with on his long walk to freedom. So I just thought that was an interesting little tidbit. So if Elsie was indeed 100% African, either South African or the daughter of West African slaves, that would mean that by my calculations, Elsie is my grandfather's second great grandmother. So 100 divided by 16, he would have to be around 6.25% African. So my grandfather is unfortunately not alive to test or to ask any questions. He may well have met his great grandmother. He was born in 1940. She was born in 1958. He may have had some answers that I was looking for, so regretfully I never got to ask him any of that. But he did have a younger cousin who now lives in Australia and was more than willing to have their DNA tested. He is his maternal first cousin, my great-grandmother Elizabeth's sister's son. So they share an identical maternal lineage, all of these ancestors they share. So again, I built out this cousin's family tree. I couldn't find any sure indicators of African lineage on his father's side. So if by my calculations, Elsie was a full-blooded African woman, this cousin would be around 6.25% African. So if we go and have a look at his DNA results here, we can see he is 9% African, one of them being at main region, South Central hunter-gatherers. And that extra three or so percent above the 6.25, which I estimated, could well be from my second great-grandmother, Elizabeth's African lineage on her mother's side. Anyway, I trust this video was informative. I hope that you can utilize some of the techniques that I utilized in my video in your own research. For those of you who watched my initial Ancestry DNA results video and you were offended or otherwise confused about how I came to my conclusions, I hope that this gave you clarity and that you do now agree with my conclusion, which is that I most definitely do have African lineage. That does not mean I'm culturally black. That's not what I'm trying to claim. All I'm trying to prove is that I do indeed have non European ancestry. Thank you all for listening today. I hope that you have a great day. Bye.